Uh, welcome to the European Docs Office Hours here on June 30th, 2022. Uh, we have a little bit of an agenda today, uh, going over a handful of different things, a couple of item, item updates from Mark regarding the uh, Docs mailing list and a couple of blog posts that uh, will eventually be given, shared uh, in a week or two. Uh, we have the Jenkins LTS change log and upgrade guide that'll be coming out soon with the next LTS release, which is going to be in a couple of weeks from up stake in Mark, um, ideally, of course. And then uh, we have uh, Vihan here. So if Vihan can give us an update about the Google Summer of Code, that'd be great. Uh, and then some other items about uh, the Java lever requirement and things that are happening right now uh, that uh, folks like Basil Crow are helping us out with and making sure that everything is ready to go for uh, continuous improvements. Uh, and then if there's some time and we have the chance to, we can go over uh, some further localization with Crowden. Um, if Alex isn't here, uh, we can pin that for next time. So, uh, Mark, if you want to just kick us off, talk about the first couple items here under the action items. Yeah, so no progress on archiving the docs list and no progress on the three blog posts. They'll have to wait for at earliest next week. Great. That's it. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, yeah, and then the Jenkins 2.346.2 change log and upgrade guide is something that Mark and I are working on and will be working on uh, as we go through. Um, there was uh, some discussion about potentially doing that today. We can definitely come back to that if that would be best, Mark. I did want to make sure everyone has a chance to share their updates and whatnot. So, okay. Um, but yeah, that'll be taken care of and we'll be sure to update everyone when there's further uh, news about that. Uh, so, uh, Vihan, if you wanted to share up updates on the Google Summer of Code project and what uh, you've managed to accomplish so far in the, since our last meeting. Um, yes, sure. So, uh, in the last meet, I was working on the uh, uh, data types of the steps, the parameters, and bringing them up to the top. So that pull request is created and it is working fine for now. Uh, we are reviewing it for some possible refinements. So it is not yet merged, but I'm sure it will be. Um, that The result of that PR is pretty good. Um, so for some larger pages, I observed that the page length could get reduced up to a seventh or a sixth. So that extra space that the types were, were taking all being shifted to the top are actually more readable also because earlier the user had to expand the parameter and then go through the help in order to read this type, but now it's there in the top itself. So uh, yeah, that is working fine now. And today I also created a draft pull request in the pipeline metadata utils repository. Uh, that is a repository we'll use to maintain the remote plugin manager that has to be shifted from the pipeline step docs repository. So our plan is to release it as an artifact. So release the metadata uh, repository as, a, as an artifact on Maven, uh, which can then be imported onto the pipeline step docs repository and used uh, basically as a dependency. And then we can get rid of the classes which are there locally. Um, so this will uh, help the other projects which want to use the power of the, Gen the plugin manager without running a separate Jenkins instance, without mocking it in their own repositories. So that is a process that we also want to take some help from the community because neither Christian or Hai have the uh, uh, permissions in order to push uh, for the Gen or the Jenkins group on Maven. So that is something that will require some help from the community in the upcoming week. And yeah, I guess the, that's uh, more or less of it. So yeah. Um, and I saw the, that you had posted in uh, the Gitter channel about a couple of about the pull requests and everything. Uh, was there anything that you'd like to demo or share here? Uh, I can stop sharing my screen if, you, if there's anything. Um, just yeah, want to make sure I give you the opportunity as well. Um, sure. So I can uh, demonstrate the uh, data type pull request if you'd like that. Yeah, why not? Um, let me go ahead and uh, just run it real quick. Um, so meanwhile, we also uh, reviewed the uh, plugin list pull requests and asked for some feedback from Tim and Mark. I think it is best suited not to uh, work further on that particular feature. Uh, we can leave it dangling as it is over there. And in the future, if we feel that we have some other idea regarding the same, we can perhaps uh, create a new pull request or update the same 
uh, towards it. So yeah, I guess uh, that is more for that. So that I'm not working anymore on that particular feature. So I'm just uh, running the Jenkins right now. Um, And uh, Mehan, what, what kind of things can we do as the community, like for reviewing the pull requests and anything else that might be uh, coming up? What can we do to help out in these cases? Um, I think um, as of now, I have three pull requests that are being uh, like left to merge, uh, small ones. So one is that plugin list, which I mentioned, so nothing to be done on that side. But on a more general note, I think, uh, whatever UI based changes are there, I'll share on the docs channel the screenshots and everything like I did for the uh, um, the data I think. And for the more back end kind of stuff, the release and all, I think uh, uh, we'll we'll let it we'll let you know on the uh, channel itself. So if you require any help as such, but for the pull request and everything, I think everything is going uh, as smooth as it can probably. Yeah. So I'll just share my screen real quick now. Um, I guess yeah, this one's okay. So, can you see the screen? Uh, pipeline Groovy library is this one? Yes. All right. So, I'll just show you the main, um, the larger one, so that you can get an idea. So what I did to see the page size was I disabled the JavaScript altogether, so all these things got expanded. But we can see from the flow itself. Um, so these all are there on the top now. So you can see the data type right beside the name. And for larger things such as this one, uh, when you expand it earlier, the string was coming all under under this stuff. So we had to go through the stuff and uh, till the time you reach there, you actually for, forget what that type was really about. So that comes out of nowhere. So that space gets saved as well. And this is now uh, coming everywhere. So I've handled every particular situation because there are a couple of different types of nestings going on under here. So all of them are taken care of now. And all in all, I think uh, this uh, feature is working fine with the pull request. So yeah, this was a little demonstration for the scene. Yeah. Thank you so much. That looks great. Uh, that navigation looks a lot cleaner and everything's very very nicely uh, placed and aligned. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much for all this work and uh, everything you're doing for the Jenkins project. It's really appreciated. Great. Uh, cool. Uh, so uh, now that we've gone through the Google Summer of Code, just a couple other points here. Uh, so with our weekly release last week, or uh, or was it this week? I forget now, Mark. Which was it last week or this week's weekly release that uh, pushed the Java level requirement? This week, right? This week, yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so with the weekly release line, the Java 11, uh, Java 11 is required. And so uh, alongside the Java 11 requirement, there are other improvements and enhancements and upgrades that need to be done. Uh, stuff like Jetty uh, being upgraded from uh, version nine to 10, there are some other API upgrades that might need to have that need to happen as well. Um, stuff like the servlet API specifically, and uh, the encoding will be changing to UTF-8 instead of uh, encoded ASCII doc. So uh, a lot more uniform and consistent across uh, organizations. And uh, Mark, is there anything else on the Java 11 improvements that we should be aware of or note here, or does that cover the general idea? I think that covers it. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, no worries, of course. Um, great. So that actually takes care of the agenda pretty quickly. Um, Mark, did you, was there anything else you wanted to go over or talk, take a look at? Here? So Vihan, Vihan had made mention of something that I think is worth a question to him. So Vihan, mm -hmm. you indicated you and Kristen may not have permissions I think we gave Kristen permissions to the permissions she had previously that should have allowed her to release new versions, at least of pipeline step stock generator. Was that what you were referring to, or is there something else? Um, I was referring to the Maven deploy permissions. So 
uh, basically under the groups uh, that we have right now. So for example, uh, what, I plan, what, what I was planning to do was uh, we can uh, uh, define a Jenkins file for that metadata repository. And in, in that, we will, uh, we will push to the Maven repository for that particular artifact uh, every time the source code changes. So much like it happens with the other things also. So for that, uh, pushing to the Maven repository, I think it requires some different permissions. Um, and I'm not sure how it is done. And probably if I'd get some idea of a similar repository and um, to see how, how things are happening. So maybe some other artifact to see how it is working out. Uh, then I can uh, maybe just take take some stuff from the Jenkins file, and after that whole thing is released ready, then we can uh, then we can ask about the permissions and all required to do the same. Okay, so so it may be at least I think it's worth you exploring. I'm going to put a hyperlink into mm -hmm. the the document, and then going to ask Kevin to click the hyperlink mm -hmm. so that we can look at it together. But I think you may want to try this. So what incrementals are is they provide a facility for Jenkins plugins to do, to save the results of pull request builds. So Bruno submits a pull request to improve the Git plugin. And when he does that, his pull request actually becomes the, the binary of his pull request becomes visible for other people to consume uh, through repos.jenkins-ci.org. And they then can refer to it by this, this incremental syntax. So this special version number that says this is an incremental. And this page talks about how to do that. You may want to explore that. I'm not sure if it will work with, with non-plugin components, but I would expect it to work with them. So you may want to look at could we enable incrementals on pipeline steps doc generator, for instance, if you need to do something with it? Ultimately, I think the thing you want incrementals on is probably the, the library you're extracting, right? Rather than the generator itself. But, but pipeline steps doc generator gives you a place to test drive that if you'd like. Sure. So we also saw some other non plugin repositories that had a release type of feature. So the first thing that we looked at was the plugin installation manager tool. So that had a GitHub actions and everything set up for it. So it had releases also, but the one thing that I couldn't find for it was a Maven artifact. So I don't think it is published as a Maven artifact on the repository. So uh, basically I was looking at the uh, Maven repository.com for all the repositories associated with Jenkins. I assume all of them are present on that link itself. Well, um, so, so let's, your question is a, is a good one. Let's take a look. I think I can show that the Maven, that the plugin installation manager is in fact deploying to the, the repository. So let's, are you oh. okay if we explore that for just a little bit? Sure, sure. I would love that. Okay. So Kevin, I'm going to put another hyperlink into the document mm -hmm. um, and let's, let's use this as our test case. So plugin installation manager uh, PR sample and let's try it. So, so there's the, Kevin, if you can click through that link, what that takes us to, oh, nice dark theme. Well done. Okay. So what that takes us to is here are components, including jar files with interesting version numbers inside their, the name of the file. Now, if we copy that one of those file names, I'm going to try searching repo.jenkinsci.org to see if I can find that thing. Uh, it's repo.jenkins-ci. Repo .jenkins .org, right? And you may not be able to search it, Kevin, because it may require a authentication to do the search. Got it. But let me, I'm gonna explore this to see. It may also take more time than we've got mm -hmm. to do, to find it. But if I look for that, no, nope. okay, let's try artifacts. Okay, and incrementals. 
and what is plug what is the the path of the plugin installation manager tool it is io.jenkins.plugin-management okay so io.plugins uh nope i don't uh, io jenkins.plugin-management there it is okay so io plugin management cli alpha rc okay what was our string that we were searching for again it was something like embarrassing it was an rc something or other here we go so the thing i'm looking for is 2.12.4-rc621 2.12 or nope, because I'm seeing an awful lot of, yeah, here we go. I certainly see lots of them, but this one is not. Okay, so it looks like the plugin installation manager tool is definitely, Kevin, I'll send you a URL. Let's, okay. let's get this one. So I'm going to paste into the document another URL that will let us navigate inside the repository stored in Artifactory at this location. Okay, so try clicking that and see if it opens us into a, oh, it would help if I did a better job of copying and pasting, wouldn't it? Mark, don't you share your screen? Uh, that would maybe uh, sure, yeah, yeah that I could certainly yeah. do. That may be much easier. I'm not sure that it'll help. We need a document that shows where we're at, but here, let's okay. share my screen just in case. Okay, so share screen is right here. Okay, so what you should see on screen is uh, the artifactory location. Am I sharing the correct screen? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So the place I am is I am in incrementals.io.jenkins.plugin-management, plugin management CLI. And now as we look through all these artifacts, we'll see a 1.12. No, what was it? Is it? 2.12.4, here we go, 2.12.4-RC618, here it is. So this is the one that is corresponds to pull request 416's most recent build. So I think, Vihan, this thing has facilities to do, so Plugin Installation Manager tool does deploy incremental builds. And I think that means you can should be able to do the same thing with plugin steps doc generator. Now let's let's see if we we may want to do a comparison between plugin steps doc generator and and um, plugin installation tool manager. I suspect what we'll find if if everybody's okay with me again sharing my screen or continuing to share my screen here. Let's look at. I may have a stupid question. Sorry for interrupting, but um, okay, we have seen that maybe the plugin could uh, the build could store the plugin artifact in that uh, artifactory or JFORG, whatever the repository. But could anyone consume that afterwards, or should uh, the people who want to consume that have a login to this website to this repo? So the artifacts can be consumed without requiring any authentication. Cool. And so Thank you. so. As an example, as an example that that I specifically use when I need to make a change to the Git client plugin, I'll make the change in the Git client plugin, and then in the Git plugin, 
I will reference that changed pull that the pull request, the incremental build of that pull request and use it. Or when I need to test drive a, an incremental plugin, I will actually define it in my configuration as code and it gets pulled as part of configuration as code. So, so it's supported at multiple levels. Super. Now Thank let's you. see Ready. what, what this thing, ah, yes, there it is. Okay, good. So Vihan, here's the, Here's the evidence that this thing has been incremental, has been made, allowed to be done incremental. Dot MVN slash extensions. This thing is one of the components required for incremental builds. Now let's see if we can find uh, plugin steps doc generator. Pipeline steps doc generator, right? There it is. Okay, and it does not have a .mvn directory. Okay, so what that tells me is Plugin Installation Manager is able to deploy incremental builds. And the reason it can is because it's been incrementalified. I know that's not a word, but it's been, it's been given incremental capability. And the way that's been done is through this page, the instructions here on the Jenkins.io page, incrementals developing components in parallel and what this tells us is to do this we say incrementalify and we submit a pull request oh no wait a sec is this the right one I, oh no let's look at this one no no that should be it that that was okay back sorry reading reading more carefully here so I think what we do is we run this command. And if I do that, again, everybody's okay with me doing this kind of live, yeah. live manipulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I do exactly that first, uh, enable incrementals. Okay, no plugin found. For, oh, oh, now I think this may be Vihan's question. Why doesn't this include the Jenkins parent palm? Vihan, didn't you ask that question earlier? Oh, yes, I did. I think you did. And it may be that in order to do an incremental with this thing, because if we look at uh, the palm.xml file of this, and we compare it with, uh, yeah, let's yeah. see, what was it? Core plugin installation manager palm. Um, here, the plugin installation manager has the Jenkins palm as a parent. This one has no parent. So, okay, Vihan, I'm going to just be as ignorant as I can and try this anyway. Nope, it still didn't like that. So there's more to it. So I don't know what all will be required. Mismatch. Oh, no, wait a sec. Huh. Okay, so there. this does not, this message is not unresolvable. I, I, I think it could be fixed because it's telling me something that it sees is wrong. And if I look at SCM, I may even see what's wrong. Uh, yeah, for starters, this is wrong. Okay. Nope. So more research needed, but I think I think you might be able to, Vihan, you may be able to use incrementals if you're willing to do the investigation to understand this, this piece. Well, I think this helps me a lot actually. So maybe a one very uh, naive type of question. So 
uh, earlier i was actually looking into the uh, mvnrepository.com and i have sent the link on the chat actually and i thought that was the uh, artifact that was the place where we store all the groups and the artifacts and i was able to find uh, most of them over there but uh, then i also found out uh, repo dot uh, um, uh, i think it's jenkins uh, hyphen ci so I, I found that so which one is a standard one like is there a difference between the two and what is there there is a difference between the two repo.jenkins-ci.org is the authoritative repository for Jenkins artifacts. Mm -hmm. So when, when a plugin is released, it's written to repo.jenkins-ci.org. When a POM file is released, it's written to repo.jenkins-ci.org. Uh, it may be mirrored or copied to many other Maven repositories, including the one you mentioned. Oh, but the authoritative location, the original location where releases are pushed, is repo.jenkinsci.org. Oh, right. So basically we can take any artifact over there and we can put it in our pom.xml as a dependency, anything that is available on a uh, repo, right? Should be able to, yes. Now right, that's, think... that's a pretty bold statement. So I'm sure I could be proven wrong in many different ways, but, but repo general, is the authoritative <laughs> Jenkins repository. Sure, I think, yeah, that helped me a lot, actually. A lot of my doubts are cleared that way. Well, this is great, actually. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for doing this. I'll look into this more, yeah. Okay, well, and, and as a favor to me, if you'd be kind enough to this one single change that I made needs to be made no matter what. So yeah, I'm gonna show you this one. Sorry, go ahead, Bruno. Yeah, sorry, okay. that's because uh, the Git protocol is not um, available anymore for GitHub, that's it? That's correct. Exactly. So, so this URL is just broken. It won't work anymore at all. Now it's, it's never used as far as I know. So the fact that it's broken is hardly ever detected, but GitHub has turned off this protocol completely. They, don't, they no longer even answer to that protocol. So in order to give them a URL that will answer, you use this HTTPS instead. And I guess one more question that I would uh, put here, and that would be, uh, is there a need to set up GitHub Actions for the metadata utils that we'll create? Um, so for the plugin installation manager, we have uh, we have the release system on GitHub itself. So do you think it, it will have any real use for the pipeline metadata utils also? I, I think it would be quite useful. And, and there's actually documentation that describes how to do it here on, it should be this one. No, nope, sorry, not that one. JEP-229, Jenkins release automation, no. Huh. Okay, we're gonna have to go find it the hard way. The search engine is not finding it the way I wanted. Developer guide. How to guides, release, setting up automated plugin release. So this, I think the same technique for automated, automated releases that's being done for, for other tools could be done for, for the pipeline steps documentation generator. Now the plugin installation manager tool isn't using those as isn't using this particular form of delivery it's still released and it's still released manually. But, but the idea of automating release is a good one. And your question, should we be doing other things? Let's look at some of the actions that are on that repository just to see. So release drafter, yes, if you don't have release drafter on pipeline steps doc generator, you want it, it's a good thing to have. And publish artifact isn't harmful, it's, it's a nice thing. What, what we get with Publish Artifact is when I look at the list of releases here, this list of assets includes the jar file. And that arrived there because of that GitHub action. So that GitHub action is smart enough to go find the place that builds this thing and copy it into GitHub for convenience. Now, I don't know that pipeline steps doc generator will benefit much from that. But if we look at pipeline steps doc generator, 
Let's go look at it. Pipeline steps of shame on me. It's not here. Okay, fine. Pipeline steps. Nope. Okay, just a minute. We'll go find it. Pipeline steps. Is it in infra? Help me out here. Um, yes, it is in infra. Ah, okay, good. There we go. Okay, so right now, this doesn't have any actions defined, but I don't know that, for instance, it also defines no releases. And so the release drafter thing won't help much. Now you may, you and Kristen may together say, hey, we should start using releases so that we have known points where we can declare this was what we delivered in this release. And if so, then release drafters are good help. Sure, so if I'm not wrong in saying, uh, the way we use uh, GitHub Actions for Jenkins repositories is just to document our changes as releases. And maybe to, uh, like we saw there, maybe to uh, provide links of those jars as the releases come. So that that's it, right? So the repo is getting pushed to the repo and everything that is happening with a different way. So with the Jenkins files, Jenkins file, I guess, and the Jenkins files uh, file for that uses the build plugin thing. So that is also something that's very interesting because it's not a plugin itself. So um, yeah, so the, the, there are certainly more ways we use GitHub Actions. For instance, we use GitHub Actions to do to do plugin releases through continuous delivery. Let's choose this one, schedule build plugin. So what you'll see here is releases, this set of releases are actually generated automatically. And I believe there is an action associated with that. So we're using on this one, we use GitHub actions to support our continuous delivery process. We also use GitHub Actions to support translation into other languages through CrowdIn. Uh, we also use GitHub Actions to do security scans. We also use GitHub Actions to label pull requests automatically. And, and those are all valid uses. So now I don't know if any of those, this one, the CD one may be quite helpful to you. And that's described on the Jenkins.io page here. This one talks about automated plugin release, this is really telling people how to do continuous delivery. And part of that is this, this GitHub action. Other parts require, are described here. So, right, so it talks about, you need to make a change in the repository permissions update, or you need to configure release drafter. You need to configure a GitHub action for the continuous delivery workflow. You need to configure Dependabot. Uh, those kinds of things. Right. Did did Vihan? Does that help you? Yeah, it helps a lot actually. Okay. So the th the main idea is um, we can treat a non plugin repository as a plugin repository and use these steps over there. So is there anything that we have to prepare the repository before uh, applying these changes? Um, I I love it when someone really says something really bold. Yes, so what you, I, would, I would rephrase your bold statement. You may be able to use many of these techniques on a non-plugin component. And while you're doing that, you may discover things where you say, oh, this doesn't quite work and have to ask for help. And, and that's okay. Sure, great. Yeah, I think I took a lot of time, but I, I, it was definitely worth it for me. <laughs> Um, Excellent. Uh, uh, thanks for your questions. And for me also, we have, I learned tons of things. Thank you, Mark, for taking time to explain everything. Thanks a lot, Mark. Yeah, so, so Vihan, you're okay then with the idea that if, if you want to do an automated release of, if you want to do releases of pipeline step stock generator, and that's something to negotiate with Kristen. I think it makes sense. If you want to do releases of pipeline step stock generator, then these, these steps, the enable release drafter, enable incrementals, um, enable continuous delivery are all good choices. I think right now, the way pipeline step stock generator is used is it's taking, 
I assume it's taking the most, it's either building itself every time it's used or it's taking the most recent build and I don't know which. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we can definitely look after our artifact, uh, the artifact release thing is set up. So this is the next big step for us. Great. Yeah, definitely something that I'll discuss with Kristen in the next uh, project specific office hour. All right. Tuesday. Super. Um, yes, perhaps you can link. Uh, yeah, it was a schedule build plugin for, for which we saw the different uh, GitHub actions, right? The CD and everything. It was. So, and, okay. and that's one of many. There are 200, over 200 plugins right now that are enabled for continuous delivery. So schedule build plugin is just one example. Great. Okay. Awesome. Great. Uh, yeah, uh, that looks like uh, we're all set for today. We are up against time. So uh, I want to be conscious and give everyone their time back. So if, uh, Mark, if you could stop the screen recording.